Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Chris again from Valone's RC Hobby, and uh, we are back with another episode of Show Us Your RCs. And I am with a very special guest, an actual YouTuber with his own YouTube channel, Poor Boys RC. This is Phil Daddick out of British Columbia, Canada, uh, Vancouver Island to be exact. And uh, I came across this channel because I got back into, I built a pumpkin. Just recently, I wanted to get back into a Tamiya kit and I wanted to do some building and I knew the pumpkin has its issues. So I did a little search on YouTube and of course, uh, Phil's site, uh, Phil's page actually was one of the first channels that popped up to uh, fix this car. And so I'm here to introduce Phil. Phil, how are you today? Hey, Chris, doing great, buddy. Thanks so much for having me on the show today. Awesome, man. Well, the other thing that attracted me to call you or to get in touch with you is I love your studio that you got going on in the background there. <laughs> That's <laughs> uh, awesome. Thanks, it, buddy. Yeah, man. That is a little piece of work of our little piece of heaven we got going on there. And uh, I just love it. It's it, you're organized, you're neat. I mean, it's clutter free. It looks great. <laughs> yeah, thanks, and, uh, buddy. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's a little slice of heaven in my own home. I love it. Uh, that's great, man. I mean, what's better than escaping from reality and just going to your little humble abode there? That's and, right. You uh, got it. Yep. That's awesome. So Phil's going to show us what he's got. And we're even going to talk a little bit uh, about RC because uh, I, I did. I've had shows with that as well, where we talk RC and you can show us your RC. So you're definitely the guy I would love to. Well, before we even get going, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself, when you started in RC and, uh, you know, give us a little history about Phil. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Um, I got into RC when I was a kid. I grew up in the 80s. I think, Chris, you and I are about the same age. I'm, I'm yep. 42. And, uh, you know, yep. we grew up in that same timeline. And uh, the the Tamiya kits back in those days, man, I, I'll tell you, I used to drool over those things. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I got the name Poor Boys RC because when I was a kid, I was a really poor boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, my folks emigrated from uh, Croatia, actually, into Canada in the uh, early 70s. And and so I was born here in Canada. But uh, yeah, we you know, we didn't grow up with a whole lot of money. So I, you know, I would get like the Sears branded, you know, the Nico Lobo and the, you know, kind of the, the cheaper, uh, cheaper RCs that took, you know, eight AA batteries and had lousy range and oh, yeah. you get all sorts of radio interference, you know, but, but that was my introduction into it. And I was probably seven or eight years old back then. Yep. And, uh, and then the, you know, the obsession just started growing from there. And, and just as I got older and I was able to get a job and earn some money, uh, First kid I got in 1989, I think it was 1988 or 89, was it's me and Midnight Pumpkin, and uh, oh, here we are. Go. The rest is history. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's my first one was I think in '86, and it was the Falcon. Nice. The Tim, uh, the Tamiya Falcon, and I remember nice. my mom. We had a local little hobby shop uh, in town where I grew up. It was a small town, and uh, it was actually behind a barber shop. So there was no oh, right face on. view off the sh off the street. Uh, so you had a like word of mouth. People knew about this shop and you just basically had to walk in the back behind this building. And then he was like in the basement down below. And I remember going down there. I mean, it was just a small little shop. I mean, there was cars everywhere. Yeah. And the, the Falcon was the first I got because I think a friend of mine up the street had the Falcon. Yeah. And I never built one before. So I had actually him. Uh, the shop itself built the car for me. Yeah. And they got it ready for me. They gave me a charger, battery controller, all that stuff. And I mean, I remember at the time it was like over $300 for my mom. And yeah, it, that box. was a big box back then. And, oh, yeah. You know, but I, I, I bid it then, you know, I got that. And then after that, it was birthday money, saving yeah. up for birthday money. And then it was the Blackfoot. Uh, nice. Monster Beetle, and then the the Kyosho Double Dare that I got because I was getting into big scale at that point. Because the Claude Buster came in in '87, and uh, in my recent video I showed. And, yeah, yeah uh, I watched that one. That was cool. Yeah, and I, I again I wanted the underdog, so I liked the way the the Nissan body was on the the, the Double Dare. Yeah. Um, and then that, yeah, that was it, man. And then it was the JRX2, the Lozy JRX2 that I got shortly after that in the early '90s, and that was about it. And then I went a huge stint without RCs until two years ago when I got back into it. Oh, nice. So, oh, that's, that's a, quite a bit of a, 
departure from RC. Oh frankly. yeah. He has you know, big scale ones behind you. So I'm sure you're having fun playing with those. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> the, the Volkswagen is also my little pride here. That's my full-time yeah. business. And uh, so I do escape from them every now and then and, and go to, go to the RC scene again. Perfect. I, I'm sorry. It's not like my parents, you know, like I, I, I when, when they were my age and I'm hearing them when I was a kid saying, oh, I, I remember when we used to do this and do that. And I, I'm sounding like them now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? but, yeah. We're uh, not super young bucks anymore, I guess. Eh? Oh, my God. You know, it's just it's so it, you, why not play, you know, and, and just That's go right. out, and, you know. So my wife says the That's same right. thing. She's like, are you going to go out and play today? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go out and play today. You know? like, Come on. That's my, my wife does the same thing. If I had a stressful day, she's like, go to your room. <laughs> go to your room. She sends me upstairs to my hobby room. That's awesome. I come up here and I, I'll find something to wrench on. There's always a project or two to work oh, on. Oh yeah. And I come come back down and I'm calmed down. I'm chilled yeah. out. You know. And yeah. Well, yeah. before we get into your cars, is there does every car that you have right now does everything run, or or some shelf queens and some are uh, there? There are. I hate to say it, Chris, but I do have a couple shelf queens. Yeah, well, me too. Uh, I, me too. Do you? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, I I like to say. I used to say that I will run every single one, no shelf queens. I was, yeah. I was big on that, but uh, a couple, a couple that were sort of untouchable for me, especially as a kid, the uh, Tamiya Vante and the uh, Tamiya Agress, those two were untouchable kits uh, as a kid. They were the high dollar ones, but I'll tell you, I used to just drool over those things in the yeah. Tamiya catalog. And, uh, and I just can't bring, you know, I, I built them both. I've got them both in the back here and I just can't bring myself to even, you know, I tested them on the carpet for like 30 seconds. Everything works nice. Put it on the shelf. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't want to put a scratch on it. You know, they're they're yeah. like, they're like rolling pieces of art. Really, they are beautiful. They are, and I just can't bring myself to run them. No. Other I, than I, that, I, yeah. everything else has been properly used and abused. Yeah. Good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I I I saw. I think an Avante recently on eBay. Uh, just the other day, I think it ended like over six hundred bucks or something. Six hundred. It's nuts dollars. what they're going for now. Yeah. Gosh. Wow. I mean. What's so special about the Avante? I, I think it's just the styling of it. I mean, it's not, it doesn't handle well. It handles quite <laughs> miserably, really, you know? Yeah. But if you, if you look at it closely, it really is a, a bit of a work of art. And I think it came out in what, 1988. And to think that it's, um, it's, it's so sort of like revolutionary, kind of space aged with a, you know, cap forward design yeah. and these crazy lay down shocks in the front and, and, it, it was just different and kind of like a dual stage chassis with like an, in a motor sort of inboard mounted. And it was just very different design. Okay. Very futuristic looking that eighties futuristic looking, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of style. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just a beautiful thing to look at. And it's so yeah. representative of the time too. Right. 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 Well, I think that's what a lot of them are. I mean, to me, a cars are known for breaking and just, I mean, some of the design yeah. designs that they did on these things, especially even say the pumpkin, you say to yourself, like, why did they, do this you know why did they do it this way um but that's the the whole comic end of it at the same time you know and that's right. again and and the fact that they're re-releasing them pretty much identical if yeah. not identical to the way they were without like really any improvements um it's it's really funny uh Absolutely. but you know but it's hats off to them you know because they got a huge following and if it ain't broke they're not going to fix it and gotcha. uh, the, of, of course, the art of them, the way they look, the box art is I still think is the best that I that I see. You know, when I watch that box art, all I think of is just it's cartoon. It's kid. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, man, it's just yeah. killer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, they lure you in with the box, don't they? No, oh, my God, they totally <laughs> do. I mean, that shiny box I got with the pumpkin that came in and the yeah. way that pumpkin looks on the box. I'm like, oh, my God, yeah. it looks it yeah. Looks sold. Cute. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, but, um, but show us what you got, man. I'd love to see what you're going, uh, what you got in the back and, or whatever you want to Sounds start with. Good. Now, uh, where do you want to start? Well, let's, yeah. All so right. start off with this guy here. This is a, 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 a bowling digger that uh, oh, wow. picked up recently. Yeah. I found it on eBay and it was unbuilt. It was still new in the box. It was missing some of the decals, but that's about it. And, uh, Super, super fun kit. And those things just haul. This is the wife's Wild Willy. Nice. And yeah, she was eyeballing this guy for some time. So I picked one up for her for Christmas. She's got the custom British Columbia Goose license plate there. There you go. Her nickname's and, been Goose for many is years. That, so. that's a, is that the similar platform to the, the pumpkin or no? No, very, you know, it's a very different chassis. And here, I'll see if I can get it off here. Oh, I see. Wow. 
So yeah, it's kind of this mid motor, super short wheelbase, mm -hmm. four wheel independent suspension, uh, absolute wheelie machine. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. It looks like it. Yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a ton of laughs running that thing. Nice Big springs on the front shocks. It's hilarious. Okay, and that's a kit too. We have to build that as well. That's right. Yeah, you got it. Nice. And over to the the wall of RC. So I'll just start at the top and stop me if you. If oh, you I, 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 I like something already. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yep. So that's the uh, MO6 low ride pumpkin. Oh, nice. nice. Look at that paint job, dude. So uh, you, you would appreciate this as an auto body or as uh, someone who works in the business anyway, restoring yeah. cars. Uh, my wife is an auto body painter. Wow. And so, she, so she painted this uh, at her shop and it's, Based on a Mazda three color, a candy red. Okay. But uh, she laid down a bunch of black before she uh, she put the candy on top. So, in this lighting, I mean, it looks nice. But uh, out in the sun, holy cow, this thing comes alive. Damn, man, yeah, that looks a, beautiful. Yeah, I put some magnetic body posts on it, so you don't see any any body posts anywhere. Really nice, kind of scale looking. Mm -hmm. Little ride pumpkin. Very cool. I, I was tempted to get one of those, you know, because they look so cool. I definitely, uh, I got to consider that now. <laughs> yeah. It looks cool. It's, uh, I did a running video with it and it's a ton of fun. Uh, it's actually surprisingly quick. Just with the stock silver can in it, it goes pretty good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was, it was awesome. Actually, I want to do like a night video with it now. There's a, uh, like a kind of a mini mall out by our house. Oh, nice. And with some neon, neon lights on and stuff. So I want to wait for that perfect night. Very and nice. Drive it. Yeah, get like the reflection of the lights off the different curves of the body. I think it'll look really wicked. So yeah, yeah. Very cool. So next down from there, we've got uh rough shod rod in the yeah. to me a MFO1X rally beetle. Oh, that's awesome, man. I yeah, love it. This, yeah. This guy's a ton of fun. <laughs> um, yeah, four-wheel drive, you know, nice big, not big, but nice knobby tires on there. Mm -hmm. Uh comes with a torque tuned motor right from the box. Okay. And uh, yeah, it, it's a blast. I locked the rear diff on it. So oh, no it can, kidding. It can, yeah, it can handle some pretty good terrain and in the loose stuff, it'll drift a little bit. It's a, it's a total blast. Wow. That looks great, man. I love it. Hits, hits right at home. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. And here's another deal that you might like. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the uh, re-release to me, a sand scorcher. Okay. And I did, I'm a huge Metallica fan and that James Hetfield <laughs> right there driving it. Nice. And actually, I'll, I'll take this one down. Yeah, so we did a, a James Hetfield tribute here. So there's James behind the wheel. <laughs> Got the Hetfield California license plate. Yep. And uh, the whole paint scheme is based off of uh, one of his guitars that he uses. Uh, it's a Les Paul. Mm -hmm. And it's got the Iron Cross on it. And these are the colors that he has on it. So uh, anyway, so. One of my favorite bands. Love these guys. So yep. definitely, uh, definitely played a lot of metal, um, a lot of Metallica during many of these builds. Yeah. And this is another one that we painted at the body shop. So the, um, great, and man. yeah, the wife put like a satin, satin clear coat on it. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it looks awesome. Very nice. And this buggy is wicked, man. It's got, uh, you see the rear wheels on here. Yeah. They are, you know, sand paddles. No differential in this thing. It just comes with the, just the rear ends fully locked. Wow. And it'll rip up the beach like nobody's business. Nice. Next down here, we've got the Tamiya Dark Impact. Mm. Which is Never on seen the that. D. Yeah, it's a pretty cool little buggy. DFO3 chassis. Uh, geez, I, you know what? I had this thing out for about 20 minutes making a running video. And I did that and I broke the chassis. Uh. On <laughs> and uh, I've got a spare chassis sitting there. It's got to put it in. So Okay. But uh, yeah, no, nice four-wheel drive buggy, kind of a mid-motor mount. And uh, yeah, put some oil-filled shocks on it. Nice. Got to get her out running still sometime here. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a, this is a re-release, but to me, a Nova Fox. Nova Fox. I remember the Fox. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so the Nova Fox is virtually identical. They, I guess Nova, they changed the name because it's the new Fox, I suppose. I see. Yeah, so it's it virtually identical. It didn't really change a whole lot on it, but it's a fun buggy to run. Oil-filled shocks, got the sweet mono shock up front. Yep, yep. Uh, this one here, yeah, this is a re-release as well. The Tamiya Sand Scorcher. 
Okay, nice. Yeah, that's got a little that. futuristic look to it. Yeah, definitely big cab forward design. Mm -hmm. Four wheel drive, sway bars, oil shocks, independent suspension. Actually, handles pretty good. And uh, I've, I did do uh, one one running video with this guy. I had it out on the beach, and yeah, love the beach. As you know, Chris, these kits they 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 all come with uh, those lousy bushings. Oh, one good gosh. thing about bushings, they don't rust. So. They don't rust. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so if I if I know if it's going to be a beach buggy, I'll keep the bushings and I won't upgrade to bearings. Ah, good because, call. Yeah, okay. I know it's, the bearings are going to rust out pretty bad, so I just keep the bushings in because they'll never rust. Yeah, I agree. Even with say a shelf queen, if you just yeah. come with a shelf queen, just you know keep the plastic bushings in there and uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Very good. Uh, moving down, just picked this guy up recently. The to me a fire dragon, so virtually the identical to the sand scorcher above it. Okay. They're in the same family. The the fire dragon is a bit more of um budget oriented. Doesn't have all the adjustability that the sand scorcher does. But very cool. Look at that though. body. I like that. Yeah, that body's awesome. Yeah, man. Looks like it's moving fast, standing still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Same thing though. Independent suspension, four wheel drive, tons of fun. Very cool. This the wild one. Yep. Okay. Super super cool. Nice. Two wheel drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tune motor in there for a little more juice. Okay. What's like and, the uh, highest motor you put in your uh, Tamiya car? The highest motor? As far uh, as like, a, you know, turns or RPMs, you know, I know, you know, most people for the most part say, you know, you can go a little modified with a Tamiya car. Uh, but when you start getting into, I don't know, 10 turn, 12 turn, something like that, nine turn. I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot for a Tamiya car. Is that, do you agree? That's a lot. Well, my pumpkin. I've got a brushless motor in there. Okay. And yeah, yeah. See if we can see that, but yep. A little dark here. Let me get her down. But yeah, so I've got a brushless 3300 kV, which is equivalent of like a 12 turn. Wow. And uh, and that sucker rips. And the, <laughs> the, is, the diffs are good. Yeah, diff is all good on that one. Wow. That that the gearbox on the pumpkin bulletproof. That thing, it's a solid gearbox, so it it's you know I want to say it's virtually bulletproof. Yeah. Whereas like the Monster Beetle up here, I put the the MIP. Yeah, I got the MIP ball dip in there. Yep, I got that too. Stock. It's so much better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that that motor really makes that kit come alive. Uh, totally, I got it one in my block foot as well. And oh, uh, you yeah, do, eh? Yeah, and you know, and I saw a nice performance uh, handling uh, boost on my black foot when I put. Uh, midnight pumpkin tires on the 2.2 rim oh yeah it's kind of stretched them out a little bit yep makes them nice and tight and you know it actually the size difference brings it down a bit makes that blackfoot or monster beetle handle i think in my opinion um a little bit a little bit better oh uh, is that right How, yeah have to try that doesn't topple too much uh, you know as as the, the narrower tires but yeah give it a shot uh it's actually yeah, yeah. pretty cool i actually yeah. have a spare set of those tires too so maybe i'll ah uh, there you go well. yeah <laughs> But yeah, the uh, like the beetle and the black, but that, as you know, like that that gearbox is not the strongest gearbox out there. So right, putting a ton of power into it's not the best idea. But yeah. if you throw the MIP ball dip in there, you're doing pretty good. That's That'll pretty cool. Handle. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I guess like you said for the pumpkin, you know, that that gearbox is good. But it would be cool if MIP did make a, a gearbox for the pumpkin or the oh, lunchbox. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, th that was something we were longing for back in the day with you know the black foot of the monster beetle because they just they stripped. You know, yeah. those dog bones just rounded out. I mean, I, you know, yeah. again, it's like you're asking yourself, what are you guys thinking? You know, I mean, <laughs> the right. cheaper model of the pumpkin or the min or the uh, the lunchbox had a better situation going. Why yeah. didn't you kind of, you know, grab that and put that into those cars? It's just, it's nutty. But yeah, it's to me. I yeah. agree. <laughs> it's a to me away. Uh, so yeah, moving down the list, we've got the frog, which this is the most recent one I picked up. And okay. uh, again, it's a re release. I haven't run it yet. But uh, she'll be a runner for sure. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can see there, but I threw a, a GT tuned motor in there. Okay. So I wanted a little more juice in the stock 540. So we put a GT tuned 25 turn. Gotcha. And uh, that should get the frog hopping pretty good. Nice. And are most of your kits re-release or do you have, you have originals? They, I do have a couple originals. Uh, very few. Okay. Most are re mostly a re-release. Yeah. Gotcha. One of my Kyoshos 
I think actually this is my only Kyo show. No, mm. I've got two, but yeah, this is the uh, re-released of the uh, Turbo Scorpion. Okay. This thing is awesome, man. <laughs> this nice. thing, yeah, it's kind of ahead of its time in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Suspension's wicked. Yeah, yeah. I put a, a brushless oh, there. There you go. 6,900 kV motor in there. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, this this I take this to, um, if you're ever out on, the, on Vancouver Island, you got to check out Tofino. There's a beach out there called Long Beach, and it's it's about a mile long. And I take this thing out on Long Beach and I'll get it going 60, 50, 60 miles an hour. I think like it just wow. absolutely flies. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's my, that's my Long Beach buggy right there. Any metal on that car? Or is it all mostly plastic? This one, it's all metal. No, wow. Well, look at that. actually, sorry, not all metal, okay. but uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So kind of an interesting chassis, like a very almost like a crawler chassis with, you know, a couple frame rails yep yep and then a plastic tub mm -hmm. inside yeah yeah wow and then metal trailing arms in the rear end there and mm, yeah and metal up front so and that guy there that's this is an original and i plan on restoring it it's just getting parts has been a challenge but i've got the final bit of parts that i need coming in the mail okay so this is the tamiya wild dagger mm-hmm and this guy's pretty neat in that it's uh, two motors. Oh, look drive, at that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, motor in the front, motor in the back. Okay. And the chassis is like a, just a giant gearbox, really. Yeah. Yeah, interesting design. It's kind of got these short shocks up front. And okay. And their shocks are pretty lousy. So I've got when, some nice uh, oil When there. did that come out? I, I want to say it was 91 or 92. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so I'm just waiting for another portion of the chassis to come in, and then that guy will get a rebuild show. Okay. Uh-oh. I see Claude. Yeah, we got some big boys down here. So. <laughs> cool. Yeah, there's Claude Buster, and I know you're a big fan of the Claude Buster. Yeah, I just got into it, you know. I, I picked one up recently, you know, so um, I, I'm, un, I'm unsure if I should leave it on the shelf or if I should have run it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's a pretty one that I got. Yeah, they're they're a thing of beauty. I and I wanted to run this one, so it's getting a bit beat up, but that's what it's that's what they're for. Yep. yep. And uh, yeah, I wanted to keep the stock friction shocks on there because it just bounces and rolls and flips and does all sorts of crazy things. Yep. I did upgrade it a little bit. Just put some twenty turn uh, dynamite twenty turn motors in there for a little yep. more pep. Okay, I I remember back in the day, like I mentioned in my video, that um, you know the the uh, Trinity Speedworks Monster Mash motors were like the thing back then to get for these trucks. Yeah, the dual, the dual motor trucks, and I think, I think those motors are like forty thousand RPMs, so they have a lot of torque to them. Um, and I remember when putting them in my double dare, and it just really woke them up. Oh, yeah. um, you know, uh, but then that's when my, you know, dog bones was popping out and stripping and rounding <laughs> out and. You know, so um, you know, it'd be cool to maybe try it in the Claude Buster, but I think right now I just have the stock can, the little silver cans in there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The silver cans aren't bad, but uh, you know, I think we always end up thinking, oh, maybe a little more speed, maybe a little better handling. Can't help but want to modify these things, right? Yep, yep. Well, that's you know, there was another motor that from back in the day. I think uh, that I talk about before is this, the Trinity Speedworks 350 motor. Okay, um, maybe maybe 35,000 RPM, something like that. And, you know, it's perfect, just a good enough upgrade for the Blackfoot Monster Beetle. And you can still find them every now and then on eBay. And I remember back reading an article on uh, Car Action Magazine uh, where they were talking like, this is a perfect motor to throw into your Blackfoot or Monster Beetle uh, without having to go crazy upgrading the rest of the car. It, it, you're hitting the oh, limit, yeah. kind of. You're hitting kind of a yeah. Mason Dixon line. Uh, so you throw that motor in there, you get a little more pep out of it. Uh, but, you know, but over time, it's, it did start wearing away the car, and uh, things were starting to break. But it's a good little addition. I have the – I found three of those motors. I found – so I have two of them in Blackfoot and a Monster Beetle. And then okay. I just put it into the pumpkin. I don't know if you can see in the back. It's like a pink motor. 
Oops. Oh, that looks so nice. I saw when you were showing me earlier. I was like, I wanted to ask you, what, what's that motor yeah. you got back there? That thing looks hot. Yeah, so I'm going to try <laughs> it in here, even though some people say to stay the stock motor with the pumpkin. Um, but I, I'm going to give it a shot. Once I get all the upgrades, the Ampro engineering upgrades and stuff, and take it for its yeah. first spin, and I'm curious to see what it does and with the longer nice. wheelbase, too, that I got on it. Yeah, looks good with that long wheelbase. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I've got that same kit coming, too, so I'm excited to try it because, again, I've you know, I've owned several midnight pumpkins throughout my life and yeah, it's been my number one the whole well, time. Well, you know, so. what all we can do is we could do a follow-up, you know, let's do like a review, yeah, you and it. I, and, you know, put some footage up there maybe and, uh, you know, get your take on it, my take, and we'll see, you know, maybe it's yeah, good for little, the audience. A little collaboration, maybe we can do some growing. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, buddy, I'll get this guy down. This is a special kit. This one almost got thrown away. The Galaxy. The Marui Galaxy. Yeah, oh, look at my that. God, yep. My friend Remember had that. One? Did he? Yep. Holy Christ. Yeah, sand rail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, and just this this thing's neat. And you know what? One of my one of my uh, employees, actually, 60-year-old guy, this belonged to his son. Hmm. And he was cleaning his son's my age. And he was cleaning up the garage. And he's like, he brought this into work one day. So yeah, it was covered in dust. It was a little bit beat up. And he said, Phil, you know, my kid. My kid's your age doesn't play with this thing anymore and yeah. pretty haggard. Do you want it? I'm going to throw it out. I said, yeah, heck yeah, I want that. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, that's like 85, 86, maybe. Yeah. And you know what, man? It cleaned up beautifully. Nice. It runs great. It's, it even came with the battery. Mm -hmm. There you go. Is that a hump battery? <laughs> no, it's just a, a six cell. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, but oil shocks and, oh boy. and the tires weren't even flat. Yeah, <laughs> maybe they get out around, you know. That's right. It's kind of got that midnight pumpkin camber thing going on yeah. in the back there, yeah. but but hey, it works and uh, save that one. And yeah, she's a beauty. Cool. Oh. There's the falcon. Yep, that's my baby there too. That's that's your baby right there. Yep, that's what started it. That's what started it for you, eh? Damn, and that's <laughs> clean, man. So I, I did a restoration on this one. This, this is original. Oh wow! And. Uh, I did a full restoration on this guy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she's looking really nice. I put some Ampro arms on there um, and shock towers from the front. Did you? Uh, yeah, because mine were broke. And he, he makes those. He 3D prints those. Oh, yeah. So um, I put them on. And yeah, I mean, it's... Um, I, I, I think like, you know, when you run this car, I mean, the, the shocks, you know, the car bounces. You know, it just doesn't absorb... Um, to, to, at least to me to the the bumps too well i mean i don't know if you came across an alternative shock set for this car maybe if i had a runner i haven't yet and to be honest i, I haven't run it <laughs> i'm too afraid yep yep uh just knowing that you know everything i've read online about these that they're really brittle they are and yeah. yeah so i'm just i'm not too eager to break anything yeah but i am very eager to make a running video of, of a vintage falcon because i think that would just be too cool yeah, and I think they do. There is in the works. I think I heard it from Tamiya Legends, his website. Uh, I think the Falcon is due out this year as a re-release. Is it okay? From what I know, uh, so that'll be interesting to see if they do any upgrades or any sort of improvements. You know, yeah. but um, yeah, Absolutely. I mean, it, 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 again, it's a wonky kind of a car. It's it's nothing that's gonna you know blow the doors off, but it's just no. you know. 80s design i mean that that was my beginner car and i you know i got the box i got the instructions and nice you know, yeah yours looks a lot cleaner though i gotta say <laughs> <laughs> yeah i cleaned this one up about a year a year and a half ago and uh and i parked it right here <laughs> okay cool nice <laughs> yeah love mm. it i'll get it out one day yeah i've got a tamiya hornet here re-release and this one this one i didn't have much luck with <laughs> i didn't make it past testing with it and I was a little bummed out when I got it because I, uh, I wanted to make this one a runner. So I did something, you know, I went non-box art, as you can see. Yeah. And I thought, I'm just going to thrash on this thing and have a heck of a time with it. And I had it out for just the first test run in my backyard, just check, making sure everything worked. Uh -huh. And I broke one of the perches for the rear, ah. the rear shock. Okay. And I, I literally ran it for about 30 seconds and I broke a chassis. Oh, <laughs> So I said, yeah, I don't think this thing's up for being a, a solid basher. Mm -hmm. So I just, uh, I parked it on the shelf and she's been sitting there ever since. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, but that's the Hornet. 
Here I've got a Tamiya Manta Ray. This is the re-release version of that, that buggy as well. Cool. Haven't had a chance to take it out yet, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Nice. This is the wife's boomerang. There, oh, see. there you go. Boomerang. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, she loves this thing. She doesn't know it, but I just picked up a brushless motor for it that's going to go in it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's great. You got a wife to support you with this and she's able to come out and play with you, you know? That's right. That's right. There you go. Uh, we got the Tamiya Hotshot here. Oh, in wow. my opinion, one of the most iconic looking, the Monoshock front. Yeah. Monoshock in the rear. Wow. Uh, it's just a thing of beauty. I got a 10 turn motor in this thing too. Actually, you asked me earlier which one I, I got, have the fastest brushless in this. This would be it. Wow. Yeah. This thing rips. Nice. The re-release to me a bigwig. That looks great. Yeah, another beauty. It's a brick. It weighs a ton. Kind of handles like a brick. Mm -hmm. But uh, look how cool looking it is. Tons yeah. of fun. Ton nice. And these two are my my pride and joy, which I can't bring myself to. <laughs> to run. Yeah. 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 The aggress. Like, look at those front shocks. They're oh, so man. pretty. And then, and these are original. Or these are re-releases. They're both re-releases. Both. Okay. They look yep. great, though, man. Damn. Yeah, that's a nice looking, nice looking buggy. Yep. And the re-releases, I mean, how much are they? Are they up there? They're up there. I think I paid, I got these a couple of years ago and I want to say they're about 600 Canadian dollars each at the time. Wow. Six or seven. And now I see them going on eBay for close to 900 Canadian dollars. Oh my God. So re-releases. Re-releases. Yeah. What? Bananas. I don't know what happened. I don't know why the prices have gone up like that, but they have. Wow. And uh, yeah. So crazy stuff. Yeah. Looks great. This guy, the Avante, this is like just pure, just like to me, a 80s awesomeness. Yep. Yep. No, I see it. Yep. <laughs> Lay down shocks and cam lock wheels and yeah, adjustable wing on the back. You can adjust your downforce. Oh, nice. That was ahead <laughs> yeah. of his time, man. <laughs> yeah, way ahead of his time. Pretty cool. Uh -huh. The grasshopper down here. So virtually like it's identical. You know, the chassis, same chassis as a Hornet, but this guy, I, I beat on pretty hard and it works flawlessly. Nice. Yeah, so she's a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. This guy down here, the Lancia Delta Integral. Oh, yeah. Yeah, four-wheel drive rally car. Haven't had this one out yet. Um, Mark, uh, Mark Bryan from Mark Bryan RC. If you ever see him out of England, um, he does a lot with this car. Oh, is that right? Yeah, man. He's got a great, great channel. Yeah. I interviewed him too early on in my uh, RC channel. Uh, okay. Yeah. He's got a lot of uh, to me of stuff. And this is one of the cars he's got. And he's always drifting with it. And, you know, he's got some good camera work too. Oh, cool. Nice. I'll have to check him out. Mark Bryan. Mark Bryan. Yep. I'll have to check him out. Cool. Yeah. The so classics. going back up here. Yeah. Yeah. The classics up here. The, the ORB chassis. The. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got the Monster Beetle, Blackfoot. Haven't yep. had that one out yet, but we'll get her out soon. Okay. Subaru Brat. There you go. Yep. Ton of fun. <laughs> my first and always have a spot in my heart. There <laughs> you go. Pumpkin. The body looks great on it, man. Yeah, thanks. That's uh, that's actually, uh, to me, a color. I forgot the, the number, but yeah, I just went with the orange because, hey, pumpkins are orange, right? So, Ex exactly. Yep. Yeah, it came out looking really nice. Sweet. And that's the wife's lunchbox right there. So Love it. yeah, the green is nice. Yeah, yeah. Is she thrashing around with it, or is that just a glare that I see? Oh no, she's thrashing on oh, it. Oh, it's she... all <laughs> paint and it's scratched and there broken. And... Uh huh. Oh yeah, yeah. She's not afraid to get it dirty. Cool. <laughs> nice. And we've got some kind of this kind of some crawlers and some different stuff here. So this is the wife's axial wraith. Oh wow, you got that? Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's got the Undertaker driving it there behind the <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, she takes this out through the mountains and stuff. It's pretty cool. Very nice. This is my, to me, a Toyota Hilux High Lift, which is an awesome truck, but it's under the blade right now. Ooh, it's getting okay. some modifications done. I'm trying to retrofit a different transmission in it at the moment. Wow. That's a little project I've got on the go. Uh, this guy here, Kyosho Outlaw Rampage, two-wheel drive truck. If you've never driven one of these, Chris, I highly recommend it. These okay. things are a blast. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, these things are super cool, and they're very inexpensive. I think ready to run for 350 bucks. Okay, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you put a hot motor in that thing, and it's a ton of fun. 
Nice. This big guy here is my mod clod. I built this about seven years ago. Wow. And it's got a Crawford Performance Engineering transmission or a chassis, which uh, I had powder coated black, G made <laughs> stock, carbon fiber lower links. Man. Yeah, I, I did have some crazy brushless motors in here, but it was just way too fast. So I just put the dynamite 15 turns in there. So it goes okay. good. Nice. Yeah, and these these wheels are actually uh, wheels and tires are actually from a 1987 Quadbuster as well. So nice. they were oh. they were donated to the build. Yeah, that looks great. I'd love to see that run. Yeah, I'll definitely put a running video together. Yeah, man. Uh, moving back up, the this is not a Tamiya. It's a knockoff. This is that HGP 407, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, you know the one I'm talking about. Um. I sell it on like AliExpress and Banggood. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, kind of a knockoff, which I you I shouldn't a, be supporting HSP them. HSP or H? Uh, it's not HSP. It's okay. H HP four hundred seven. I think it's called. Okay. Yeah, so it's a it's it's a blatant knockoff. They did a great job. Wow. And uh, but yeah, so I did it up in the the Tamiya Bruiser library there. There you go. Yeah. Nice. And this is my CC01, which has <laughs> a lot of hard miles on it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like Tons. the body. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's all scratched and beat up. Had a ton of fun in this thing. That's all right. And that's the wife's CC01. She's got her fully charged lipo sitting on it because she's ready to go today. <laughs> ah, nice. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the wife's TRX4 Bronco. Oh, okay. You got a TRX4. Nice. Yeah, and, then and that's my TRX4 Bronco up there. And then I just got into crawling. Um, I just put out a crawling video yesterday for like a another knockoff car. And the reason why I uh, I picked it up, and it's kind of silly to buy an RC because of just the body, but it, it's a vintage truck. Let me see if I pull it over here. Yeah, I watched your video this morning. Yeah. yeah. And I like it's stuff. I like vintage body. stuff. Yeah, it's got a great body on it. And it's a company, Funtech. They're out of France. Okay. And I've never heard of them, you know, but apparently they've been around for a little while. So Funtech-RC.com, if anyone's interested. Um, if you go to their website, for some reason, I think the price is outrageous on their website. It's over $300 or 400 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. And But I found it on eBay. I don't know, $150 out of nice. Australia. And, no you know, I was, I, I didn't know... Again, if God forbid I broke it, what kind of parts uh, can I get for it? So yeah. I just did a Google search for, you know, Funtech uh, and a CR CR12, they call it. And so I put that in a search and what comes up is team associated CR12. Oh, no way. So I looked hmm. it up and, and Main Hobbies did a video on the CR12 Tioga, it's called. And I'm like, okay. could it be the same car? And sure enough, he took the body off and he's showing it. And I'm like, it's the same damn car, you know, like right? same motor, same ESC, same tires, same battery that comes with it. And I think just the team associated version comes with oil filled shocks, a bit better controller and does have like some side plates on it for a little bit styling difference. Uh, but other than that, everything else is the same. Is so that like, right? All right. So that's when I hit buy it now because I said to myself, if something happens to it, I can get it through, you know, team associated with the Tioga yeah. line. Um, there might be some subtle differences with the truck. But uh, so I got that. And then I picked up um, HSP has a, uh, a crawler, but with a beetle body on it. OK, so I bought that as well. And uh, so but it wasn't advertised as an HSP. It was advertised as Aleco. Oh, and weird. Like, what is Aleco? I never heard of them before. So uh, I, I hit the, I went for it, $180, $189 off Amazon. I bought it. It came with everything ready to run. And when I get it in, it's an HSP box. And HSP, um, they do make it with the Beetle body on it. But this yeah. guy put a Leco on it. He put his Leco sticker on the on the instructions in the box. So he's basically grabbing hmm. HSP and just throwing his name on it or something. Uh, so, Weird. but at least it's HSP, and then I can I can get parts from there. But that's yeah, lots of parts available. Yeah, that's very well built. That piece. Uh, it? Yeah, it's got a lot more steel on it. The truck is mostly plastic. 
you know, yeah. so it's got plastic, uh, you know, drivetrain and stuff. And, you know, oh, okay. the, the links in the front and everything is just all kind of plastic. But you know what? I've been bashing it around and it takes a good beating. Um, yeah, it's right just on. very, very bouncy. You know, I found okay. that when I first got it, I mean, it, it just the car was just bouncing. So I got to think about getting some oil filled shocks for that little guy. But so, uh, yeah, so they're not oil filled shocks and just like a friction shock. Yeah. And, you know, I thought at yeah. first they were oil filled because I would press the body down and it would slowly come up. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, maybe there is oil in there. <laughs> they're just you know, binding. And I was, it, that's it they were the, the, binding the, out of the box <laughs> exactly at the, the bottom of the shock body where they the, the screw cup at the bottom was yeah. just they're too tight and when you tighten it oh, too okay. much it was getting it was hanging up on the the, the shaft so i just backed gotcha. off a little bit a little wd-40 and now she's bouncy uh yeah. but um yeah so those two trucks are my first foray into uh crawling okay and i at first i'm you know when i was looking to get into crawling i'm like I don't know. I don't see what people like about it. I, I to me, I'm like, yeah. I don't know, you know. And then my friend had the axial, um, the Capra. Yep. Right. Yeah. And I and I did a video on that, and I got a beach by me, so he's going over rocks, and I saw the articulation of the wheels, and I'm like, damn, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And and you know what's nice about filming those cars is because they're they're, they're slow. Yeah. So, I mean, I can, I had two cameras going and he's, he's, you know, running them and my wife got hooked on it. She's like, wow, well, I would run the, the crawler because it's slow. Yeah. And I'm like, that would be great because then I can film you. Because most of my videos I'm filming and running at the same time. Yeah. You know, so I, I got my yeah. brains going two ways, you know, to, Absolutely. to, to try to get my, my I feel shot. your pain, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, yeah. so, um, so I picked up those two and now I, I I'm running it at first. I'm like goofing around. I'm like, what the hell is this man? Like, how, what do people yeah. see out of this? But then after a while I was getting into it and I'm like, you know, this could be fun, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, so I ran the, the old truck. I got to run the buggy. Uh, okay. so, but yeah, I never got a Traxxas like what you have, uh, or that TRX four is a game changer. You know, I, I heard, and yep. I, I'm in the same boat as you, buddy. Like I had a friend that picked up an axial Wraith when they came out. And I was like, I don't get it, man. Yeah. Going slow, solid axles. Like what, <laughs> uh, what's the point of this stupid thing? Yep. Yep. And uh, he's like, and he said, and he coined a perfect phrase that Phil, there's something about rock crawling. You don't get until you go RC rock crawling. Yep. Okay. And I went out and I tried him like hooked. Let's go. SCX yep. 10 bought it. And oh built my it, gosh. You know, like, yeah. There you go. And yeah, I just hooked instantly. So yep. the TRX four, if you want something, I mean, out of the box, that thing is just brilliant and yep. performs awesome looks super scale mm -hmm. you know you can build them up any way you want and they're just a blast yep yeah, yeah it's something I, I i've never gotten into it i have no traxxas yet you know okay uh so i'm i'm i'm, I'm trying to pick my first traxxas of course the x max always comes in through you know to my <laughs> yeah. foray every now and then yeah because uh, i do have armor stuff you know i have the armor creighton the big yep. one the fifth scale yep. how uh, do you like so it Oh, it's great. You know, I, I even like the version one that came out, you know, I was enjoying that very much. And, and then when I heard about something new was coming down the pike a year later, I'm like, let me sell the V1 now. So yeah. when the V2 comes out, but the V2 really is not even the V2, it's um the EXB line, the extreme basher line, it comes as a roller. Okay. So you buy your own electronics. So I did the build video on the electronics. Uh, and yeah. then I did uh, a running video. I don't know if you saw the running video I did. No, I haven't. Yeah, check that out. I put a lot of time and effort into that. Did you? Went, okay. Yeah, I went with a dark theme and yeah. uh, went to, yep, I went to like an abandoned place with these old abandoned buildings and just give it that uh, whole backdrop it. and horror look. And oh, uh, I put so much time into that freaking video, man. I was editing probably nice. for 12 hours. Oh, and now I got, and I have 20 years editing experience. So yeah. I know how to bang out stuff and I know my shots. Yeah. And uh, it's just like, I don't know. <laughs> It's just wow, it's that's not, awesome. It's yeah. not going anywhere. That. I'm watching that tonight, guaranteed. Definitely watch <laughs> it. And you'll you'll get the theme out of it, you know. I, I love with, it. Yep. So I went with the dark night theme. Oh, you know? cool. so I was gonna put a cape on it and everything. Are you kidding? But I said <laughs> that would be wicked. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, but um, but listen, man, this has been awesome. I love having a conversation. I feel like we could talk forever about this stuff. Oh, yeah, we can kill uh, a day doing this, I'm sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> For sure. But um, I love your collection. I even love the boxes that you got there on uh, in the back. I mean, that's just, yeah, man, that's just killer. Yeah. Thanks buddy. Yeah. It's, 
I love them. Like I said, you mentioned at the start of this video, even just the box art. You look at that box art, you can't help but get excited. Yep. And I, yep. I, I just love being immersed in it. Uh, oh. Something about it kind of brings me back to that first hobby store experience when you were a kid. Yep. There were boxes on the wall and there were kits out there and parts on the wall. And it's just, it just, yeah, something about it just brings it all back, brings those warm and fuzzy feelings back, you know, oh, a little bit, of, totally little bit of innocence and a little bit of, um, you know, just a little bit of wonder in a crazy world that we're living in today. Kind of, it can kind of wash all that away. It's a know? great and, escape. And it really is. It really is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we, me and you were, be, were born before tech. So, right. you know, we can, at least we can relate back to those times. I mean, there's kids today that are out, you know, after tech, they're born in the 2000s and they're born in tech. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I feel like sometimes, you know, when the power goes out and, you know, we can't use our gadgets or whatever, it's kind of humbling. And it, uh, it really is like it's it's therapeutic in a way. And, uh, you know, so it, it's always good. Like I say, go outside and play. That's it. You know, get off the tech and shut down. And uh, you, you got know, it. it. It's peace of mind for sure. You uh, bet. But, man, this has been awesome. And where can people find you? Uh, people can find me on Instagram, four boys, RC. You can find me on YouTube, four boys, RC. Okay. And yeah, those are my, my two main platforms. I'm on Facebook as well, but not, not so much. It's okay. Yeah. So just those two are my, my, my two big platforms right now. Excellent. Well, this has been great, Phil. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I hope we can get back together one day and talk shop again and, uh, you know, absolutely. Just, yeah. Just keep the hobby alive, man. I'd love it too, buddy. Thanks for All having right. me on the show today. I really, really appreciate it. This is awesome. Uh, you bet, man. And uh, listen, guys, anybody, if you guys like this content, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and head over to Phil's channel as well. Subscribe to him and smash that subscribe button. And, uh, you know, uh, we got we got two good channels here for you and good content every week. So uh, hope to see you guys around. All right. Take care. Mm -hmm.